for a continent as large and a continent as young shouldn't be so in my opinion i would expect that you know we are represented more like the numbers are higher and i'm saying this because at the end of the day most of these things that are built are used not only by the people that built them but by everybody on the planet if technology finds a way to penetrate and go into even sometimes remote villages so now when you're building these things you would want to at least make sure that whoever whoever you're building for the demographic you're building for whatever it is whether it's age whether it's you know location whether it's tribe whatever it is is at least represented in the people that are building this thing so that some of these use cases you know would be thought about and accounted for and it would be a lot more relatable i know i've said a lot of jargon from the beginning up until this point because you're wondering how my talk actually aligns with what it is that i'm saying now but i'm saying this because it's important for us to know where we currently are so that we will know why we have to do the things that we have to do and these tech opportunities would come i mean they are already coming from africans getting you know god knows how many millions of dollars depending on what startup you are trying to build to fund your business to companies hiring africans remotely and companies even going even coming to africa to hire africans and looking at all of these things everybody else around the world is beginning to see the potential of africans in technology over the next few years and as a result many opportunities are going to come out are going to come up are going to come out you need to make sure that you are in a good place to take these opportunities when they come so that it can be easy for you to grab them by the horn or grab them by anywhere you want to grab them but just get them it's very important and i'm going to be talking about how you can position yourself in six i'm going to be talking about six key areas that you should focus on six key strategies to have in mind six key important questions to have to have or directions to tailor your questions to so the first one for me the first area of focus is focus that's not kind of like cliche now that i'm thinking about it in my head but like you need to think about what you want to do and you need to focus your energy on what it is that you've thought about remember eyes on the prize the prize is to get one opportunity multiple opportunities it could be job opportunities it could be opportunities for it, it could be opportunities for different things that have to do with the media or rather the tech media it could be speaking opportunities it could be travel opportunities it could be different opportunities that doing things in tech would give you but whatever it is that is your prize so you are supposed to focus. You need to set goals. You need to think about those goals that you set. You need to smash those goals and then you need to set more goals. You need to set goals that are important to what you want your end results to be in that time. Whether it's that you want to get a new job or that you want to be a better public speaker or that you want to get accepted into the google season of docs so you want to you want to like maybe take like some technical writing course so that you can have like a few and then you want to take a technical writing course and then you want to write a few articles so that you can apply and then hopefully get accepted that could be what you are that could be the opportunity at that point that could be the angle at that point whatever it is you need to focus on that you need to define goals that 
you believe will lead you to that to that opportunity to that end goal you might be asking questions you might do research you might reach out to many people but you need to do these things basically i said three things set your goals your learning goals any other goals that you need to set over overcome them smash them and then set more goals and then just repeat the next thing i want to say is perception and this is a question you need to ask yourself it's important whether you're building a personal brand, whether you are trying to, whether you are trying to position yourself as a person, whether you're trying to position an entity, position a brand, position an organization, position something, perception is very important. You need to ask, how do I actually see myself? If I was somebody else looking at myself right now, how do I see myself? I'm supposed to be a front-end engineer but if as I'm looking at myself now I don't really see myself as that I see myself more as a developer advocate it means that there's a disconnect in my message and in my core values than in what I actually am and I need to go back and then rethink and re-strategize and then come back how do other people see me because at the end of the day, you might see yourself in some kind of way because you're in your own bubble. You need to ask your friends, ask people around you, okay, pertaining this tech thing that I'm doing, if I step into a room, if you didn't know me before, how are you going to introduce me? If you didn't know me as your close friend, but you know me by all the things you see on my social media or everywhere or all the things I tell you or whatever it is, how would you actually introduce me? How do you see me? What do you think I am? Do I call myself an Android developer, but you actually see me as an iOS developer? Do I call myself a web developer, but you actually see me as a data scientist because I'm doing like 7 million things at the same time, so my message tends to confuse people. You want to have a straight message. You want to be perceived as what you actually want everyone to perceive you as. Then the next thing is post-perception. Based on that, you need to appear. People need to see you. People need to know you exist. A few people may have already known you and perceived you to be something else. But like I said, there are 1 billion people in Africa. There are more than 1 billion people in Africa. You need you need to make sure that you are reachable and you can be seen. Don't isolate yourself. You need to do things and share them with the world. Whatever it is that you're doing, whether you are actively actually building things that people are using, whether you are actively maybe contributing to the open source, whether you are actively um, speaking or writing or whatever it is that you're doing, you want to put yourself, you want to appear. Like you don't want to be someone that is under a bed and nobody sees you and finds you or nobody even sees the work or knows anything that you're doing. Another important thing for me is character. You create your persona, you build a unique brand. I like this picture so much because I don't know if I've ever seen an orange that is blue. And you are very important, you are very unique as a human being because there's only one you. So you need to bring that thing that is unique to you that nobody else has except you. Build character, build your unique brand around, build your unique brand, build character, do all these tech things. Um, Gift has a video on YouTube where she talks about, you know, trying to build a technical brand. And I would advise that anybody, Gift Egwenu, just in case I said Gift and anybody else was wondering who she was, I would advise that anybody that has the time actually goes to watch that video because it explains everything that I might not be able to explain in this talk because I have limited time. And the next thing I would want to say is, appearance and your character like go hand in hand and sometimes being just appearing is not enough because that thing that you are saying that you're doing right 
somebody else has probably done it somebody else can probably do it what makes any atom what makes you unforgettable what makes you unique is who you are your character traits and this quote says be good in your appearance and eyes will never forget you be good in your character and hearts will never forget you this quote is coming from more the beauty sense meaning like if you're a beautiful person you know people would always see you and admire you and like eyes will never forget you but if you're beautiful inside then people would always love you from inside and never forget you you can transfer that energy and transfer that quote to this context as well if you show up everywhere you need to show up to as a dev that requires people to know you right people would always see you people would always know who you are but if you show up and you bring an element of you you show up and you bring that one thing that makes you you that has everybody wanting more of you they will never forget you the next thing is authenticity you know you need to be you need to be authentic with your message your bio should your bio can't read something and your tweets read something else it's one thing to just you know say stuff but it's actually another to actually say those things and do them at the end of the day actions speak louder than words you don't want to confuse people with your message you don't want to confuse people with your actions you don't want to confuse people with the things that you do you want people to see you for you and know that this is exactly who this person is you want people to trust in that brand that you build the brand that you built in the previous slide when i was talking about brand building you want people to trust in that brand because your message is authentic you want people to trust in that brand because you as a human you are authentic and the last thing i want to say is consistency i think it should have even been the first thing because it caps everything if at the end of the day you've done one to five of these things you know you've you found a way to like focus your energy on something you've built a brand you've appeared the right way you have done this one you've put your character in check and then you've made sure your your message is you know not up and down all over the whole place i am not meandering but you're straight and your message is concise and you're authentic but you are not consistent you're not gonna last long and consistency is from two angles consistency isn't not is not just about you know continue engaging your audience continue making sure that you write continue the usual things that we always say continue making sure that you write continue consistently contributing to open source continue trying to volunteer at whatever tech conference that you can continue trying to speak at this thing continue trying to do this and help developers and mentor where possible and all of that continue being an active community person that's one side of consistency and that cannot be overemphasized and i'm not trying to talk about that in this talk because a lot of people say this every day a lot of people say this every day on social media off social media on different webinars so i don't want to talk about that the second part of consistency because like i said it's two things the second part is consistency in your domain and that that also cannot be overemphasized you can't be an android developer today and you're a medical doctor tomorrow and next week you're a data scientist it gets confusing and it goes back to the first it goes back to the second point which is perception if you are not consistent in your domain you're not consistent in that one thing that you're doing if i have an opportunity today maybe my office is hiring like i don't know um front-end engineers and i know you do front-end but at the same time i feel like you do 700 other things 
and I just feel like this person is actually not fit for this opportunity and I can go and give it to somebody else because you were not consistent enough and your perception is just wrong. What you think you are is not what everybody else thinks you are. So I think those two, consistency in your domain and perception can tie as things that could be together. You need to ask people, what am I? You need to hear from their own point of view. This is actually what I think you are. And then if that's not what you want to be perceived as, you need to work on it. And then you need to be consistent with that thing. It's okay to switch careers. And that's different from switching careers. I mean, once upon a time in my life, I was an Android developer. Today, I don't know the last time I actually used Gradle or built an Android Studio project. That's not me anymore. And that conversation has shifted. I have tried to move that perception of Adora the Android developer to Adora the ML cloud, the MR cloud engineer, Adora the mixed reality services person. I've tried to move that, change that narrative so that I'm not perceived as an Android engineer that I'm not anymore. And then one day tomorrow, nobody enters my email and says, oh, there's this Android job that I feel like you'd be a good fit for because that's not me. It's okay to switch roles. I mean, early in your career, early on in your career, you might be a developer and at some point you're like, I want to be a developer advocate. And then at some point you're like, I want to be a program manager. But whenever you switch, make sure it's clear that you've made the switch. Um, another thing I'd want to say is out of, as I've said all these six things that I've said, it's also very, very important to leverage these platforms and more. I mean, as a developer, GitHub, I can't, this can't be overemphasized. Your GitHub is like, you know how artists have like, artists, product designers, all these artsy people, they have Dribbble where they can show their portfolio that they can actually build. GitHub is your dribble. GitHub is your canvas. Use it. Write code, share code. Write code that people actually use. Build random things, at least that are in line with who you want to be or who you are. Build random things that people use. Let them use it. Let them credit you. Let them contribute to it. Let it grow. Contribute to other things that, you're, I mean, you're not the one that builds per se, but a bunch of other people use. You know, use your GitHub, build different projects for learning and for growing as well. Your LinkedIn, should you can make your LinkedIn basically your online tech diary. If you have any talk, if you give, if, if you give any talk, put it there. If you volunteer on, like whatever platform, put it there. If you write an article, post it there. You, like you can link it there. If you, whatever it is that you do, you can, you can make great connections on your LinkedIn and <laughs> you can make great connections on your LinkedIn and you can also share whatever it is that you do with these connections. Um, and the last thing is, the pretty obvious one, which is Twitter. Like a bunch of people are there for you to ask questions, to do things. So just use these three platforms to your advantage and make sure that you can be seen on these places. And hopefully when people get opportunities that sound like things that you should be doing or be able to do, they will reach out to you. The last thing I'd want to say, like I, I think I've I treated this thing over and over and over and over again, which is that you should work on yourself and you should make yourself attractive because people are attracted to what they see. And if you make yourself attractive, people would see you and they would like you and they would want to give you things. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Adora, for the amazing section. I've learned a lot, and I also believe that everyone has learned a lot. So, if kindly, if you have um, any questions, you can join the comment section and 
we will get us to respond as soon as possible. So we have our next speaker already waiting. We have um, Adam on your, talking on growing your network, the why and how. So quickly, we just invite her to set up her section. Hi, Ada. Everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, um, just give me a minute to present my screen. Okay, please let me know if you can see my screen or when you can see my screen. I'm not sure it's taking so much time to reload. Okay, great. Okay, so um, hi everyone. Good afternoon once again. My name is Ada Nduka Oyo. Not Oyo, it's Oyo. Okay. And um, I'm going to be giving a very, very brief talk about building your network. I cannot overemphasize on, on, we cannot overemphasize on the essence or the importance of something like this while trying to build your career path. But before I jump right into it, it's going to be um, a conversation type of uh, talk, and I would like participation from every single one of you. I know we're not a lot, so it's definitely a chance for people um, who are on this call to give you one perspective to questions that I will be asking at different points in time. Um, the topic that was sent to me was building your network, the why and the how. So if I jump right into this, I'll just give a brief introduction of myself. Um, I'm currently the community manager for Sub-Saharan Africa at Google, um, where I oversee activities for women technicals and um, Google Developer Group. And it's really interesting being on this call. Thank you, Izzy, for inviting me. And also, um, currently the founder of She Code Africa and also Open Source Community Africa. Right. So, this is like the dictionary definition in quotes. Um, this is the part I like to speed up real fast with and get right into the main conversation part. Now, if anyone would ask you, what is your network? What would you say? I mean, you're, you can see what I, I'm going to say on my screen, but I want to know what you define as your network. So please feel free to unmute yourself and give your response. I don't want to put it on chat. I'd like to um, get your response directly. Okay, uh, my network hey. for me is um. Oh, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Go on. Okay, for me, my network is um, is some total of everyone I know that knows me. Okay. Who else? Does anyone have any other definition of what? their network means to them. It doesn't have to be what you're seeing on the internet. It can be whatever it is that you want it to be. Okay, I can say my network consists of my circle of friends. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I got that. Um, Rukaya, no. Boladi, Lillian Thomas, thank you. Any response from you guys? Favor, I'm seeing people on call, and the way I have my own talk is I bring in, I loop into going into the conversation. So I'm waiting for your responses as well. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Go on. Okay, my whole network is what I define as my network is my my base, my connection. People we have the thought of like minds, people we grow together, people we 
um, discuss issues together, both um, spiritual, financial, and um, economic, and even social life together. That's my network. Okay, I like your definition. That's that's really smart. All right, so in order not to waste time, I will just continue. Now, if you ask me what my network is to me, it's basically this. If you notice, I am highlighting on specific things, substantial relationships, individuals, aid, and growth. Your network is basically people who surround you to either help you grow, to help you grow. And growth can either be positively or negatively, depending on how you want to fine tune it to your own desired setting. Now, in my own case, it will obviously be for positive growth. Now, I'm highlighting on substantial because you could have any sort of relationship. Some relationship um, could be of no value to you, but you're still in contact with that person, you're still in sync with that person, you're still in communication with that person, but it's of no value to you. I don't classify things like that as valuable network. If it is substantial, it means it's helping you improve on yourself, which means it's aiding in your growth positively. Now, who defines your network? I mean, now that we understand what the network is and um, how you would identify what your network means to you, who defines this particular network setting? Now, if you notice, um, for the three different points that I put on this next slide, it has you in cap, which means the first thing is it's you. You get to define how you want your network to be. If you want to be amongst the bad eggs, you have the sole right to insist or to choose the kind of people you want to follow. If you want to be successful, you can't be following people who are on the wrong track or on a different path success than what you're currently trying to or the path you're currently trying to aim for which means you get to define everything it's just like saying um, when people talk about peer pressure and they tell you you have every right to say no if you don't want to do something you have every right to turn down offers things like that you get to have the final thing everything now your career path as well also defines the network just like adora was talking about uh, in tech if you want to be identified as an XYZ in XYZ field, you have to do things related to that field. If you're coming into tech, for those of us who are coming into tech, or whatever field it is, or whatever career path it is that you're trying, you're trying to go into, you get to define the kind of network that you build within that career path. You can um, say you want to excel in software development, for example, and you're having friends or you're having large network or a large number of the people under your network are focused on entertainment or show business it's not going to it it's not going to work out really well it might eventually work out for it to take a very slower phase than when someone else who is trying to be successful in software development as well has 90 percent or majority of their um members of their network who are also in software development. Now remember, your network doesn't have to be your group of friends. It doesn't have to be people who you banter with daily. It could be people who you look up to. It could be people who you classify as mentors. It could be people who, you know, you just spot them and you say, okay, I want to be like that kind of person. You don't have to be so close to the person. So long as they're in the same field with you, they're in the same line with you, they're going, through the same path that you want to go through, you could have them under your network. Just that this time around, it's not a closed network, it's open. So that's for your career path. And then your personal interest as well. Personal interest in the sense that it helps define your personal growth. Career path and personal interest sort of meet together at some point. They marry each other at some point. But they, also, they also differ at some other points as well. Now, personal interest in the sense that even if you want to excel as a software developer and you have personal goals of, say, um, writing articles as a pastime, you know, just for fun, you definitely need to build 
a network that of people that you can look up to, people that you can reach out to. Now, this personal interest, the network that involves personal interest means a closer set of people that you can reach out to. It's quite different from the network that you would have if you're going on the your career path. For career path, it could be it could be a very large network of people who same people who you look up to. For personal interest, it would be a smaller group, group of friends where they're always speaking up for you. If you have issues, you can reach out to them, you buzz them, you're texting them on WhatsApp, you're DMing them on um, Twitter or Instagram. You don't have to go through protocols to interact with them, unlike when it has to do with the network um, consisting of people under your career path. So these things help define your network. When you have to sit down and think about it, you know, under your career path, who are those people that you'd consider part of your network? Who are the people on the uh, personal interest? Who are the people that would help you or aid your personal growth? Who are those people within your network? Now, a lot of times, um, bringing it down to tech, a lot of times people ask, why do I need to improve on networking people? Why do I need to connect to people from coming into tech? I mean, I can just learn whatever skill it is that I want to learn. Um, I apply for a job, I have the skill, that's it, I do my job, and that's the end. I don't need anybody to speak up for me. I don't need to reach out to anybody. There's always Google, blah, 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 blah. Now there are several, several hindrances when you're trying to do things on your own. Remember they say, um, there's this wise saying that the power of a broomstick is when it's together. You can't be a one-man mopole if I'm going to break it down in local parlance. You can't be a one-man mopole. Only you can do everything. At some point, you need somebody as an insider in quotes for you. You need somebody to be able to speak up for you. You need somebody to vouch for you. You need somebody to make the steps easier for you. You need somebody to smoothen the road for you because they've gone through that path already. You need somebody to motivate you. You need someone to inspire you when you're going through that um, breakdown process or that crisis process because in every career, at some point in time, you feel like you're losing it all. So you need some sort of people to be able to inspire you. If you're a Christian, it's fine if you have to pray but you also need physical motivation. You need people to tell you things are going to be okay. You need people to tell you to stand up and do X, Y, Z this way so that it will work out. There are several, several, several reasons as to why it is important to network with people, why it is important to build an immense, sustainable, and substantial network. There are several reasons for that. But these three reasons on my screen are the top reasons as to why I consider networking very important to any individual. So the first thing is accelerated career growth. So just like I said, you need somebody to vouch for you, you need someone to speak up for you. If you want to do something on your own and you think, say, okay, say for example, you want to learn front end development and you feel you can always get everything on Google, you have YouTube, you have Wikipedia, um, there are textbooks, et cetera, et cetera. You don't need to reach out to anyone. And consider person B who has a network of people who have already gone ahead of him or her and achieved this thing and they're getting insights from these people and where they would normally have to experience a long hurdle, it's easy for them to really scale through but because you choose to be a one member pool, it will take a longer time which is why I said accelerated career growth. Having a substantial network in whatever field in whatever career path it is that you want to build makes it easier for you to grow really faster. That's why a lot of people say, oh, I need a mentor. Why do you need a mentor? Because you understand that this person has gone through this path that you're trying to go through. They've gone through the hurdles. They understand everything. They understand the issues that you would normally face. They understand the series of doubts that you would have. They've gone through that. So they relate the experience and they help you get over it real fast. That way you don't have to spend so much time working. And there's a difference between working hard and hardly working. And there's a huge difference between those two. So that's the first major thing. If you ever, ever come in doubt with yourself thinking of why do I need to build my network and what's the essence, think about, about the thing. If you really want to grow in your career path, it's one of the major fastest ways, trust me. 
the people who you're seeing as or who you're considering as key industry players in whatever ecosystem it is that you are in, but I'll use tech as an example. These people have interacted and have made connections, growth connections, personal connections, career connections with several other people in the industry, with several other people in the industry that they can look up to. It's that simple. That way they don't have they don't have to stress over any other thing. Now another thing is personal branding and growth. It will help you in the sense that for personal growth it's quite simple. As long as your career is growing, you're also growing personally. You're developing yourself personally. You're, sorry, you're developing yourself real fast, real quick. The mistakes that you normally make, you wouldn't have to make a lot of them. I don't have to emphasize on personal branding because Adora also mentioned something like that. Now, for diverse opportunities, this is the icing on the cake. Let's just consider it as that. If your network isn't bringing you diverse opportunities or isn't even bringing an opportunity at all, then maybe you might want to change your network. Because one of the essence of creating an amazing substantial network is to be able to get diverse opportunities. Diverse opportunities, I'll use myself as an example. Creating uh, my network, I have people who are in different fields, both in tech and outside tech. And I have people speaking for me. Oh, we need somebody to do XYZ. Have you heard about Colocodes? We need somebody to do XYZ. Oh, I know Colocodes. I'm getting referrals here and there and there. Consider this and compare it to someone else who wants to just, you know, just do it on their own. There's nobody picking up for you. So nobody's referring you. You are just on a single path and you're just going down straight, really slow, like a couple so diverse opportunities is like the icing on the cake that you get to benefit when you have an immense substantial network. Now, how do you get started with your network? Like I said, my talk is really short and very, very straight to the point. How do you get started with building your network? So I'm throwing the question open to everyone. I have to go back to the previous slide so you didn't see my own answers. With these few things I have said now, what would you consider as one of the amazing ways to build your own network? I'm waiting. Okay, um, for me, one way to build my network would be to go on social media and connect to industry experts or those that have been there, engage under their posts and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, Any other questions? Okay, so um, when I try to... Hello, Ada. Hi. Hi everyone. When I try to um, hi. when I try to reinvent myself in technology, I actually started building my network by joining technology co communities. So that was how I started off, and so far so good. It's been amazing and wonderful. Okay, that's really great. Joining communities. Any other person? Okay. So um, hello. Can you hear me? Yes. When I wanted to grow my network. I attended more events. So at the event, I just networked with people. Yeah. Okay, so physical interaction with people, that's great. Anybody else? Um, yes. Like others have said, I joined communities that participate in what I do, and then I attended conferences. Attending conferences relating to what to do is very important because there you get to meet people who have been through what you are just trying to learn. You get to meet senior developers in your field. That's a good way to network too. Mm -hmm. So one more response before we continue. Who else? Okay, I would um, add in addition to what uh, the other people have already said, I think to build a a good network, one needs to um, attend programs or functions 
related to a chosen path, a chosen career path, a chosen area of interest. So that way you get to meet people with like minds, like um, interest path, and you get to build your network that way. Okay, amazing. I love all the contributions all of you have given. It's all valid. So because of time, I'll just brush over this um, this thing, last slide. So yes, back to my own screen. Now, notice how I said you have to be intentional. That's the first thing. If you ever want to make your network and to build a network, you have to be intentional. Now, building or starting or creating your network can be considered really easy for people who are considered extroverts or who tag themselves as extroverts because, oh, I just walk into a room and I can start conversing with anyone, blah, 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 blah. But someone like me who's an ambivert, um, I'm largely introverted and slightly extroverted. People like us, we have to make, or people who are fully introverted, people like us, we have to make super efforts to even talk about things that we do. Now, the first thing, I don't know for anyone who follows me on Twitter, yesterday I shared, I was creating this slide and this came to mind and I shared it as a tweet, be intentional about sharing your success story. I've noticed as women, uh, experience over time working with um, women in tech communities is that a lot of men, women are shy to talk about the amazing things that they build. So I'm bringing this down to women because this is um, a diversity type of conference. So I'm bringing it down to women. A lot of ladies are shy to talk about what they do. I mean, if it's not perfect, because we're brought up to think that if it's, nev if it's not perfect, it's nothing. Unlike how guys, how it is for guys where, I mean, it's average and then they congratulate them. They tell them, oh, you've done well, this is amazing. So they grow to that mindset that average is nothing to them. Whatever it is, whatever it is they put in, that's superb to them. But for us, if it's not perfect, if it's not even near perfect, it's nothing to us. So we can't even talk about it. And personally speaking, I've had to go through that kind of phase where if it's not this, then don't bother about it. But then slowly, keep beating yourself, and then slowly you have to realize that it's not your fault, first of all. So you have to be intentional about sharing what you do. If you don't talk about the things that you do, no one will know about you. No one will know about it. I mean, a closed mouth will bring any glory, if we're going to be honest about it. Be intentional about what you do. When I started out back in school, leading a WTM community like this, when we have any events, I make sure that I go to Facebook. Then I'm super active on Facebook. I make sure I go to Facebook. I post about it. I don't care if nobody comments on it or if nobody likes it. But I know people were watching. It's that easy. It will continue like that. And then after a while, after getting DMs, people will message me and say, oh, what you're doing is amazing. Or you go to the post and you see that nobody's commenting on it, but then you're sending DMs. And after you realize that people are actually watching, they're actually observing what you're doing. So be intentional about sharing what you do, because when you talk about those things, you find out there's some other people who'll be able to relate to what you do, and they're willing to want to either grow with you or learn from you, and that's how you start growing your network. It's that simple. The first thing, the easiest way to grow your network is sharing what you do. I normally tweet about my successes, I tweet about my failures, I tweet about, about random things that are happening within me, so not everything, but things that I feel some people be able to relate. The last time, um, a few weeks ago, I think it was last week, I made a post about um, the difficulty I was facing while, while starting out in tech when I didn't have a laptop, blah, 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 blah. And it went quite viral, and I noticed a lot of people could relate to that. Just that post alone has gotten me a lot more opportunities than I would have imagined if I just saw the paper that day and like and just laugh over it and just keep it because now nah, this is not this is not me. It's not perfect. So you have to be very, very intentional. The key word there is intentional. No matter whatever option it is, whatever path it is that you want to go about growing your network, you have to be intentional about it. Even the socialites, the top people in communities, top people in the industry, top people in your country, whatever it is, they are always intentional about whatever networking activities that they're doing. And another thing is also highlighting your success story. It's not 
um, bragging if it's fact. That's what people say. As long as you know you did it the right way, you did it the good way, and it works, talk about your success story. You also have to be intentional about building a personal brand. Just like um, Adora mentioned, gifts, Egwene, she has a video entirely about building your personal brand as someone who's into tech. So I would definitely recommend, maybe I'll look for the video and drop it as a link after my talk on the chat. I definitely recommend that video to you if you're trying to look for ways to build your personal brand. Another thing is, it's not just about getting, getting, getting. You also have to give. So be intentional about offering help. So that's another way you get to the network. Somebody says, oh, we're stuck with doing X, Y, Z. And you reach out and you help them. And then you start the conversation from there. Before you know it, because you are willing to help them, if something happens next time, they're going to be definitely willing to help you out. Even if they can't help you directly, they'll be willing to, if you're lucky enough, they'll be willing to be the middleman to connect you to somebody who will definitely help you. So that way you've gone two steps ahead. You have one network and they've helped you connect with another person. Before you know it, you're growing gradually, your network is increasing gradually. And another thing is, also be intentional about finding the right platform. This comes down to um, building your social network on um, a social platform. You have to find the right platform. I'm mostly active on Twitter when I want to talk about anything related to work. I'm very active on this. For some people, it is LinkedIn. For them, LinkedIn is where they get several opportunities, where they interact with people, blah, blah, blah. blah. For some people, it's Facebook. For some people, it's even WhatsApp. Their, their WhatsApp is like the most active platform for them. For some people, it's Instagram. Well, whatever platform it is that you find very comfortable enough to be able to do every other thing, create that niche for yourself. And let it be known around that that's, that's like your specific. And then the last thing is to retrace the process, which means start from the first one. So when you don't find the right platform, go back again, share what you do, highlight your success story, build your personal brand, offer help, then we trade that again. It's a circular thing. It never stops. It never ends. As long as you keep growing your network up until the day you leave this world. It's that simple. It never stops. Sometimes it could be intentional. Sometimes it might not be intentional because it will get to a stage where you don't even have to make an effort to reach out to people, but you're still building your network based off of interactions, people reaching out to you this time around. So that's it. Share what you do, highlight your success stories, highlight, even talk about your failures as well. Nothing, there's nothing bad in that. Build your personal brand. Your personal brand, there's never a peak to it. There's always opportunities to improve on yourself, but always opportunities to grow. Keep offering help. Even when, if you offer help, that doesn't come back. It don't matter. Like, it doesn't matter anyhow. Continue doing it. At some point, it will pay off. And then keep on retracing the process. And that's all. So thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Um, um, thank you, Ada. You can ask the questions now. You have any questions? They can drop in the comment section anyone that works for you. Okay, um, thank you. Ada. Maybe wait for them to drop their questions in the comment section. So while we wait, we can just go on to the next thing. Thank, thank you so much for pouring out all this value for us. Thank you. My thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Yeah. So I don't know. Okay. And I have a question already. Okay. When is it advice? When is it advice? Is that building a personal brand? Okay. Um, hi, Joy. <laughs> um, as soon as possible, like, you don't have to wait till you're out there or till you're blown in that, in, in quotes. As soon as you start or pick up whatever career path, as long as you have a niche in whatever it is you want to do, it's that simple. You have to start. Because, like I said, it's a never ending process. And as you keep on growing, you keep on improving on yourself. So don't wait until you get to a certain point or a certain peak and then you think, oh, this is right. I'm building my personal brand. Once you're into whatever field it is that you're doing, 
just pick up from there because it's going to be a lot more easier starting out small and then scaling up than waiting to you scale up before you scale up. Wow, thank you so much, Ada, for that amazing answer. So I don't know, is there another question, anybody? Any other question? So we still wait for more questions. They will drop more questions, right? So when we get them, we sure ask them. Thank you so much, Ada. Okay, um, hello everyone. I know we're having an amazing time, so just want a little break for two minutes while we digest all we've been learning. Just two minutes break. You can drop your questions in the comment section. And one minute is already gone. So just refresh on what you've written down and bring down your questions together while we invite our next speaker. So our break is over already. It's two minutes. So we have our next speaker already ready for us. We have Chamaka Usumba talking on choosing and growing a career in technology. So, hi, Chamaka. The stage is up for you. Um, hello, Chamaka. Yeah, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, let me quickly share my screen. When you can see my screen, you let me know. You can see from here, from my end. Okay, okay. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chamaka Osumba. Yeah, so I am a software engineer with field intelligence. Uh, field intelligence, we work hand in hand with the government and businesses. We are actually in the healthcare industry. We make pharmaceutical supplies affordable and reachable to largest health systems and even the smaller job shops across the country. So currently we are present in close to four countries across the globe. Yeah, so today I'll be talking on, my topic is on choosing and growing a career in technology. Yeah, so out there, there are actually many definitions and explanation as to what career itself means. So I will start by explaining what career means. Some people might say that it is the sum of all the jobs you hold in your lifetime. But then let's look at, let's think of career in, in another sense. Let's think of the decisions we make about the jobs that we take on, the universities we'll attend, or even the courses we study in these universities. Let's look at all these choices as valuable components of a lifelong process. If we view it in this manner, we can then define career as the sum total of all the decisions that directly impacts our education, social, economic, political, even our spiritual endeavors. And at the end, helps reflect the unique personality that each of us possess. Now, if you listen to the definition I gave on career, there is something that stood out, and that is decision. I made mention of decisions. 
So we'll say that our careers are actually influenced by decisions we make on day-to-day -day basis. And then this might now bring us to a question. Some people might ask, what do I want to do with my life? At a point, I've had to pause to ask myself this question. What exactly do I really, really want to do in my life? And I know that some people still might have asked this question at some point. But then, to get an answer to this question, some will now say that you need to find your passion. Some will say you need to find what you love. But the truth is, we might not even know what we love until we try things out. In this past, I'm talking about career-wise. We might not even really know what we really enjoy doing until we try things out. And looking at Nigeria, using Nigeria as a case study, most times the careers, our careers here are influenced by sometimes religion, culture, even our family or society at large. There is something that is rampant here in Nigeria when it comes to choosing career path, and that is what I might call copy cutting or mimicking. There is this behavior that when you want to choose your career path, like we like following the crowd. Let me give an example. Before now, let's use the music, let's use the music industry, music, football, even beauty pageant. Before now, these careers were not really something that really resonates well with the society or even with our parents. But because of the success in recent in recent times, because of the success, this um, success of people in these careers in recent times, our parents are beginning to see that okay, this is actually a career path that their children can follow. Aside the normal, be a doctor, be a lawyer, be an engineer, or even the tech ecosystem. Before now, when you are carrying a laptop, you are either a Yahoo person. Yes, you are majorly a Yahoo guy. But right now, because of the success of people in this industries the society is beginning to adapt or accept them i made a tweet a few days back on this particular topic to know what people might think about it to get the opinion of the community and these are some of the replies i got um and says that we should when i asked how can one grow? How can one start and grow a career in technology? Some people replied, and you basically responded by saying that you should let the career choose you. He went further to say that you should work as hard as you can to keep growing deep and wide in as many related disciplines as possible until you land a job project, etc. So in a sense, he's trying to say, Try as many things as you can as you're starting off until you find one that resonates well with you, until you find one that you are happy working with, or until you find one that brings money into your pocket. Then another one person responded and said, well, I think you start from the general and gradually work up to specialization. Another person still responded and said, you need to identify your interests. Do I have an eye for design? Maybe web development. Or do I like interpreting data in visual? Maybe data analytics. So in a sense, this person is trying to say, before you start, try to identify what do I like? Do I like mathematical equation? Do I like um, the logical part of things? Do I like the design part of um, life? Do I like colors? So all these things can help in you choosing a particular career that will relate well to who you are as an individual. Why another person yet replied and said, you will also need help from the people in this field. The tech space is all about interacting and collaborating with others. He now said, just an advice from members of the community group will save you the years of having to read about these things. Another says, find a mentor. Now, the steps of choosing a career in tech are not really set on stones. These are something that you might need to figure out on your own what be works best for you. That is why I would say don't rush things. Come down to calculate the cost. Here, yeah, I quoted the scripture from the Bible that says if you want to build a tower, you need to sit down and calculate the expenses. 
Now, we have many career opportunities in the technology ecosystem. And this is not time for you to, when you want to start, it's not time for you to just rush in. When you rush in, you can make mistakes. You can keep on, you're just like someone who is a bed patching from one tree to another. If you do not come down, you rush in into this field, you might keep on moving from one place to another, from one from one tree to another without patching, without, yeah, so, The tech ecosystem, like I said, is so vast and you need to take your time. Yes, I've mentioned that. So you don't find yourself jumping from one area to another. Now, another thing I would want to say is when you're starting up, you need to listen to advice. But then not all advice are good for your mental state at that time. Listening to all these at the same time might make you really be confused. Because all the advice you might get when you're starting up are based on people's personal experience. And their experience or their condition or their circumstances might not really be the same with yours. So yes, listening to advice is very important. But then it's also important that you listen to yourself. You know what works well for you. You need to know your strengths and also know your weakness. You also need to tell yourself that, yes, at, when I'm starting up, Career in technology is not something that you start off today and you start making money the next day. It's not like tailoring or hairdressing that you can start today and in the next two months you start cutting, sewing clothes or start making someone's hair. This is something that takes time. So you also need to understand that, yes, at times things will get uncomfortable, but your ability to try to adapt will really help you succeed. Another thing is most people have asked, do I need to have a formal education to pursue a career in tech? Or if I want to start, do I need a formal education? Like do I need a university degree or something that looks equivalent? The answer is no. Okay. Then others, why starting out? might also say or there are different ways out there that people start learning some you some attend boot camps others prefer video tutorials others go to youtube like ada mentioned there are a lot of online learning platforms out there today like audacity code academy and the rest of them while others went through an internship program so all these like i said have their own benefits. I've been opportunity to attend different, um, to try different learning patterns on my own. And I will tell you that all of them are actually nice. They have their own value. They have, they come in handy at different stages of your career growth. But then you must not go through all of them. You must not um, attend and um, go to an internship program and also um, um, go to a boot camp or, or like they are, all, all of these methods come handy at different stages there are times when you need to do something and then a video tutorial comes comes to your rescue sometimes it's documentation but then like i said all these things are not set on stone you need to find out what really works for you me i resonate well with um visual learning so i prefer reading i, I prefer watching tutorials even um compared to documentation though there are times that documentation will work best because there is no video tutorial on that particular topic or the problem you are trying to solve, then you have to look for the documentation to that particular um, framework you're trying to implement. So all these things are not really set on stone. You need to understand what really works well for you. Now, when you have started, yes, let's assume all of us have started, we've made the first step, then what now comes next? Like the topic says, how to start and grow a career in technology. Now, now that you've started, you need to grow. So growth, you now need to grow. So if you look at the picture there, you see like a plant, just like a plant needs water, you need to keep on watering the plant for it to grow. You also need to keep on watering yourself. Now, there are this, most of the topics, um, most of the examples or the points I have here have already been touched in one way or the other by... Um, by Ada Ramodu and Ada Oyam. So I will be skipping most of them so as not to overemphasize. 
Yeah, it's true they mentioned consistency and picking a niche. This is actually very important. And I'm re-emphasizing it because I, like, I had a problem with this when I also started off as a software engineer. I started off in school, yeah. I was doing a whole lot of things. I started with the Java programming language, Java EE. I was doing web. At the point, I because I was doing web, I started doing mobile. At the point, I went to AI. At the point, I like I was in different places. I, I didn't even know what I couldn't explain. Like people around me, they knew the things I could do. But like at that stage, they couldn't recommend me for a position because they know that I do a lot of things. So at the point, they were confused. At the point, they were confused as to what exactly to recommend me for. Can you see my screen? Hello? Yes, I come from my end. Okay. Yeah, so like I said, you keep on, you, sh you need to keep on, you need to keep on, um, where did I stop? Okay. Yeah, so you need to keep on doing, you need to pick a niche. Yes, I was talking about consistency and picking a niche. Consistency is very important. You need to also pick a niche. Can we go for a little break? My system just went off so I can turn the generator on. Sorry, I forgot I wasn't charging it all this way. Sorry, okay. two minutes, two minutes will be fine. I am so sorry. All right. Okay, guys, welcome to Nigeria. <laughs> so, um, we've been learning a lot so far. So, if you have your questions, please drop them in the comment section. And once we are done, our speakers will answer all our questions. So, we just wait for Chamaka to come up again and we continue. So while we wait, we can, let's just do something else, something more fun. So I don't know, um, for you that, that, that's been listening for a long time now, who can just share one or two things you've learned so far that um, resonates well, like you've learned that actually speaks to you specifically, so that you started to do something about it as regards to what you do already. Can you just share one thing you've learned one take home point you've gotten so far from our uh, three speakers. Anyone? Hi. <laughs> Can I talk? Yes, please. Okay. So I, I one thing I really um said with me was something from what Adora has said. When she was talking about character, she was like, What makes you unique? What makes you stand out amongst other developers? Sometimes it occurs to me that there are so many people um, entering programming fields, so many computer science students, so many self-taught developers, and here and there you go on LinkedIn and you see like people having different profiles. Almost everyone is doing HTML, CSS, web developer. But then I appreciate from what she said that as a developer, you have to stand out. So you have to um, build projects that will show that you are different from other developers. Many many persons are developers by just, um, um, how would I put it now? 
by just word of mouth. They don't really have something tangible to show for it. But from what she has explained, I've realized the importance of having projects to to yourself, having projects that you can showcase that this is what I've done and to make it stand out in the developer field. I really appreciate that. Also, thanks to um, Ada for her talk. I enjoyed what she said. Okay. Thank you, um, Bolagi, for your contribution. Right. Thank you so much. It's amazing that you're learning one or two things from this whole section. So, does anyone have any other review? Okay. What are you back? Yes, I'm back. I'm trying to share my screen, but I can continue talking. Unless anyone has something else to share, we can still get, we can still listen to the person. If no, someone no, no. else has something to show. Okay. Well, why don't we for your screen? We can just. No, but see, uh, just, uh, just continue. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So I was talking about um, consistency and picking a niche. When I was talking about your yeah, growth process, when each and every one of us has started out in one career path or another, Obviously, the next thing is for us to start accelerating, going from one level to another. So it is actually important, like the first and second speaker mentioned, that we are consistent and we pick a niche. This cannot really be overemphasized because I have a lot of people in my network that I'm kind of, I get confused when I see a job opportunity. I see a job opportunity that they are in need of a React developer or they need an Angular developer. And I'm kind of confused. Should I call this person? Or is it this person? Or is it this person? But then if you pick a niche, like people know you that this is what I do. This is the particular, I'm a web developer. I'm an Android developer. Being an Android developer, I use Twitter or I write Android. So doing, like picking a niche will really help people recommend you for positions. I'm still trying to share my slides so as to share another point. So I listened to why my slide comes up. I don't know why it's taking time. I read an article by um, Prosper. Prosper with a clinical developer and he made reference to something. He asked who is your advocate? The, so he went for that to say that, that before now he thought that it's people that did the hard work, most of the hard work that are being recognized or get some job job opportunities. But that the truth is this, that even though when you scale through a job application, you are being shortlisted. You are being shortlisted for a particular position. The next question he asks is that, who really will vouch for you in that field? Let's take, for example, 45 people are shortlisted for a particular position and your name is mentioned in the room, he asks, who really vouches for you? If there is nobody to vouch for you in that particular um, situation, you see that the ball will roll over to the next person on the list. It has nothing to do with, it really has nothing to do with um, your skills. Yeah, your skill, has, your skill obviously got you into the room. But then, what will now take you further is, if someone in the room can actually can actually vouch for you. So that also points out the point as the two speakers earlier on mentioned that, that we need to share whatever it is we are doing. We need to, I think my screen is up now. Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, so here. So he asked, this is a quote from um, Prosper's article, one of his articles. I will post the link to on the comment section in case someone wants to go through it after now. So who is your advocate? This question is really very, very important. It's really important that we ask yourself, who is really speaking for us at each point in time? Then the next thing there is, while growing, while growing, 
something else is very very important and what is that that is building 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 if you're a software developer and you've chosen to be a software developer you need to continue building it doesn't just end in watching tutorials or yes it doesn't just end in watching tutorials attending this stuff or internship you need to really build and show that this is what i can do when you're asked what is it that you've done you'll be able to present this is what i've done at this particular point in time we've talked about selling yourself now why selling yourself it is important that you document your processes this is what will make people know that this is actually what you do remember when i talked about when i asked the question who is your advocate nobody can advocate for you or speak on your behalf if they don't really know who you are or what you do or what you can bring to the table nobody wants to take that risk because of their own reputation so they need to be able to ascertain that this is your level this is what you can do and for them to ascertain that owing to the fact that these people are not your cool they are not your close associates most people that might recommend you might, might be people that are watching you on twitter or other social media handles or someone that you've worked with so for these people to be able to ascertain your level you need to put yourself out there so you need to document your processes Social media is there to help us. I, I don't need to overemphasize that because the first and sp second speaker, they've already emphasized that to an extent. Use social media, maximize social media. Then another thing is there is that you need to learn to say no. This one might be very difficult. I've also been a victim. You need to learn to say no. The moment you started growing in your um, career, you started moving from one level to another. There are some job opportunities that will come your way. But the truth is that the moment you take on those jobs, instead of your skills to start appreciating, they will start depreciating. So you need to learn to say no. Learn to pick out single, single out opportunities that are really meant to accelerate your growth. And the ones that are meant to depreciate your growth, you need to learn to say no. Is very, very important. Another one is that while you are growing, yeah, rejections will actually come. It's not all roses. There are the hard times. You can send thousands of applications and you'll be turned down. But then your ability to overcome rejection, the ability to overcome rejection and still continue will really help you accelerate your growth process. Then the next thing is into a whole lot networking is actually very important like ada made the use the phrase she said no man is an island and that is very true networking is very very important if you want to grow in your career path now the truth is that when starting out your skill your first few jobs your skills will land you your first few jobs but then the truth is that sometimes the other job opportunities you might get might not really be your skill, yes, your skill is there to ampli amplify your application, but then it might be based on referral. You know this person, and this person saw this opportunity, and the person sent you, okay, apply for this, and the person is there to vouch for you. So you need to be very careful who are in my network. Like Ada said, your network should be very, very quality. You should have people of quality in your network. Anybody that doesn't bring value to the table should not be classified as being in your network she has already explained what network means so i will not go into that now if you look at the few boxes there you can amplify your network via social media she also explained that via communities you can join a whole lot of community a whole lot of communities out there that you can join and amplify and grow your network you have the gdg for loop and the rest of them you can also um, grow your network via boot camps, attending boot camps, attending events, meetups, or even collaboration. There are times where you grow your network, you make friends by contributing to projects. Projects that you might not even know the people before then. But after working on the project and they, they are able to ascertain, okay, this is the level of this, this individual, this is their skill level. The next time they have an opportunity, it will not be very difficult for them to refer you because they've had a one-on-one -on -one 
working relationship with you and they know what you can bring to the table. So networking is very important. The other points I have here have already been dealt with by the previous speakers. So because of our time, I'll skip them and go over to the next slide. Yeah, so when I was preparing this talk, I came across this book, How to Build a Career in Tech by Product Fund. So I will drop the link, I will be dropping the link to this book in the comment section in case someone wants to go through it. It has a lot of um, advices from people in the industry, people that have had first-hand experience with all of the things we've been talking about in the industry. It has some advice on what you should do and what you should not do, the type of advice you should take and the type of advice you should not take when you're trying to start up, when you're trying to grow your career in tech, when you're trying to switch careers, or even when you're trying to grow a startup. So it's a good read. I will recommend it. So to climax my talk, I will say, I will quote, I will be, I will quote the quote you can see on the screen that says, "Start yesterday, start early, start now. The sooner you start, the sooner you can reap the benefits." Thank you. Wow! Oh, thank you so much, Shamatong. For the amazing talk, like, this is really very, I'm not a developer, but I'm learning a lot from this section. And I know everyone here is benefiting so much. So, um, again, if you have questions, please drop them in the comment section so she can answer all your questions. Thank you. I love the link. Thank you so much. So, any questions from anybody? If you need to put an X or drop in the comment section. Any questions? Any questions? If you have any questions, you can ask. The absence of questions for now. Thank you. Okay, hi Bolaji. She drops the link. Okay, that's the link to the sec to the video, Bolaji. Thank you for pouring out the link for us. Thank you. So we'll just continue with our program. I don't know how you learn a whole lot today in these sections. And it's about our time. This is supposed to be for one hour, but we spent one hour at 18 minutes. So we we'll just round up. But just before we round up, there is something that has always worked for any great man you know, the power of affirmations in in the world of technology and about anything you are doing there's always a time when you get stuck up on a particular thing and you need motivation to continue and there are words that you say to yourself every morning and every time that, that are kind of a power booster for you so i have some affirmations for us to um say this afternoon we've learned a lot we have been talking about this over and over again. For me, I've learned I shouldn't do a lot of things at the same time. 
to pick my niche and stay on it. Let people know me for a particular thing. So briefly, I will just say out the affirmations and I will also drop them in the comment section. And I think, and I think we should all copy it down and say them. So I think we should just unmute ourselves. So once I say a particular sentence, you can repeat after me. All right? Are we cool? So I'm dropping them right now in the comment section. So where you see my name, please put in your name there. So I'll just say them. My name is Mary Thomas. I am innovative. I am creative. I am a great woman. I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. I am a great, so I'm typing it right now so we can have access to it. I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. I am focused. Life does not overwhelm me. I will practice all that I've learned. I will always practice all that I learn. I have solutions that the world needs. I am a global brand. I will help other ladies around me rise because this is actually very, very important. The power of helping others rise. I'll help other ladies in my space. I will collaborate and not compete. Together we can and together we rise. So you can check the comment section. I've dropped our affirmations there. So I'll just go through it again. And I think you should just copy it and replace it with your name and still post it down there. My name is, can say your name. I'm innovative, I'm a creative, I'm a great woman. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am focused. Life does not overwhelm me. I will always practice all that I learn. I have solutions that the world needs. I'm a global brand. I will help other ladies around me to rise. I will collaborate and not compete. Together we can, together we rise. Thank you so much for attending this, our virtual event for International Women's Day. So I'll quickly call on the women technical Women Technicals are back lead, isn't it, to give us the closing remarks as we close. Hi, isn't it? Okay. Hi, Isn't No. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Okay, we've come to the end of today's event. I want to especially thank every one of us who came around, especially our speakers. Thank you so much for the wonderful section.
Though the two two out of our speakers are not here, Ada and Adora. Chiamaka, thank you very much. We really got value from your sections. Thank you very much. And to everyone that came around that logged in into this event, I want to say a very big thank you to you. Thank you, the real MVP. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, we've come to the end of our event today. Thank you, Bolaji. I can see your affirmation. So please feel free to copy them and write them down in your, in your, your personal journal. Because there are some times that, like I said before, things will overwhelm you and all that. So we have a community WhatsApp group. So if you joined already, we'll send you the link to our, if you're not on the WhatsApp group, we'll send you the link to our WhatsApp group. I guess you have your emails. Hi, isn't it? Do we have the emails? Yes. Yes, yes, we do. Okay, so we'll send the link to our um, WhatsApp group where we can engage more with you. And you can ask any question you want. And we'll reshare the links to these documents that our speakers already dropped here for us. So you can have a better access to it and the um and the whole lecture. So thank you so much for joining and we are done. All right, please, in case you didn't register, just drop your email address in the comment section. Okay. Okay, we are done, right? Okay. okay. All right, I think that's all. Yeah. Thank you very okay. much and have a nice day. Thank Enjoy you. the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.